Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. So for this video, I am going to be talking about the Assassin reworks all in one and give you an idea on what I personally believe to be are the strongest to the weakest and the ones that you should definitely watch out for and the ones that maybe seem to be a little bit underwhelming or lackluster. I've been getting a lot of requests from people to try and give you my thoughts on the strongest and weakest of the Assassin reworks, so hopefully this video will do that justice. I do want to quickly point out that the Assassin rework is still going to be on the PBE for about two more weeks, so there's still a lot of chances for buffs and nerfs happening to many of these champions and this list and the order that I currently have definitely may change by the time it goes to the live server. This video will be made in collaboration with pro guys who have just recently launched their new app and to kick off their launch they have a cool giveaway where you can win a year membership to their site. Just click the box on the screen to subscribe to their YouTube channel and you'll automatically be entered and it's that simple. Good luck to everyone. Alright, so let's get into the actual topic of the video. Now, I will split this up into two parts. The first part will list in order of strongest to weakest, or weakest to strongest, the four big changes of the Assassin reworks, and then we'll look at the six smaller changes and also list those in order. So let us start things off with the four big changes and also start things off by talking what I believe to be is the weakest of the four, LeBlanc. Now keep in mind that's not necessarily me saying that the LeBlanc rework is bad or it's just absolute garbage, it's more of just, yeah, it's not bad, but it's weaker than the other three. So let me quickly explain as to why I believe this is the case. So first the positives of the LeBlanc rework, I mean a lot of really cool things you can do with her ultimate now, you can have that clone appear almost anywhere and it can burn a lot of flashes, but when you start kind of getting used to it and when you're facing higher low players, it'll be a lot easier to not let that sort of really make you panic or make you burn a summoner spell or a certain ability. It'll be a lot easier to read, so I feel like as people get used to it, that ultimate will slowly become less and less useful. But the damage that the ultimate does provide when you activate it and use another ability is quite good. You can do a lot of great things. She still has a huge amount of outplay potential with her W, the distortion. And for the most part, she still plays very much like LeBlanc on top of someone now that has fantastic wave clear because of her passive and Q interaction. So all in all, I mean, she is still pretty much LeBlanc. She still has a lot of damage. She has better wave clear. But I mean, the half of her ultimate just kind of is going to be feeling very useless as people get used to it. So I feel like that could be a pretty big downfall. All in all, she still has a great amount of burst damage and I do believe she's actually quite strong, but of the four, I have to say she might be the weakest. Following this, let's talk about the next champion that I believe to be the second weakest of the four big changes, Katarina. So I feel like some people might look at this as a bit of a surprise, but let me explain why I put her in the number two spot from weakest to strongest. So if I were to remake this list and list them in order from the most difficult to the least difficult, Katarina without question would be the number one champion. She is much, much more difficult to play. She actually requires some serious thought process and thinking ahead and how you want to plan the daggers out because yeah, missing the daggers or not using them properly is not going to really warrant you too much damage. I mean, she does have a lot of damage in her kit. She can do an insane amount of plays, and I feel like she has potentially the most actual potential in her kit. And I definitely feel like there's a lot that she can do, and there's a huge amount of depth to her kit. But the fact that she is so difficult to play, and it is going to be hard to sort of make her actually very useful, makes me want to put her in the number two spot from weakest to strongest of the four big changes. But keep this in mind, I definitely believe she has the most potential. So if someone actually masters this champion, well, I would definitely start watching out for them because she can not only do a ridiculous amount of damage, but she can do some seriously sweet out plays. Moving into the next champion who I believe to be the second strongest of the four big changes for the assassins, I'll have to go with Rengar. Now this one is going to be extremely close with the number one spot to the point where you can pretty much consider this guy and the number one spot, which obviously now is Talon, to be pretty much in the exact same position. I've seen a lot of Rengars on the PBE server and it doesn't really help that most of them happen to be one trick Rengar players, but I have seen the potential of this champion and I mean, he's pretty much the same thing. From what I've noticed so far with Rengar on the PBE server, and I could be wrong, is he is the same champion, just easier to play. He's much more straightforward. You don't have to really queue in all those three different things, your E, your Q, and your Tiamat or Hydra in your middle of the jump while you ult someone. You just simply put your ultimate down, you get that free critical strike, you jump on them, which instantly generates you one of your four ferocity stacks. You QWE them, boom, you have four ferocity again, and chances are you want to Q again, and the damage is insanely high. He scales really well, his Q does a ridiculous amount of damage, and I have still seen a lot of Rengars just simply one-shot a lot of players on the PvE server, just like the way he would do on the current live servers. All in all, I feel like he has potentially better wave clear, his W has a bit more potential to actually be more useful, 
But at the end of the day, he is still very much Rengar, just more or less kind of a dumbed down kit, easier to play while still accomplishing more or less the same thing. And finally, we have the number one spot who I believe to be the strongest of the four big changes, Talon. Again, this is kind of a personal opinion, but whenever I'm playing on the PBE server, I'm usually the most scared of Talons just because of how much damage he can actually do. I remember reading a post stating that maybe Talon is actually a little too weak coming into the PBE server and all of these changes, but... Personally, it doesn't really seem like that's the case. His kit is really not that difficult. It's also fairly easy to play. The amount of damage he can do at level 2 with the W, the hitting the person twice, and then queuing them to not only proc the passive, but also get the Q damage and your auto attack damage going. With the ignite and the bleed damage from the passive, it's a lot of damage. So all in all, I mean, his burst is just great. His W feels like it's easier to land. It feels a little bit wider, which could just be me, but I'm not entirely sure. He has a huge amount of gap close now with his Q ability once it's rank 5 and a bit of CDR because you'll just be sticking on your opponent a lot. And the damage he can do with his Q if you do it while right beside your opponent is really really high. But let's not forget one of the best things about his new kit, his E ability, the ability to parkour, go over walls. This is gonna make Talon insanely difficult to catch while also making him appear literally out of nowhere and coming in to kill you. I'll promise you guys this right now, if you have not played on the PBE server and if you have not faced the new Talon. Once he gets onto the live servers and you have to experience trying to chase down a talent that's just simply jumping over walls, it is going to tilt you and it is going to make you very upset or mad. It's very, very annoying. But so far, my personal opinion is the fact that Talon, I think, is the strongest of the four. Next up, let's jump into the six smaller changes of all the Assassin reworks. And just like the previous example, we're going to be starting off with the weakest to the strongest. And starting things off with this list, I'll have to put Akali in the number six spot, or I guess technically number one spot for being the actual weakest of the six smaller changes. Now, I do want to say this may change very soon because apparently in the next PBE patch, Akali is receiving some buffs now as this video goes live. Maybe those buffs already went through. But as Akali stands so far and as I've played her and what I've experienced so far, I mean, not necessarily horrible, but definitely feels a little bit weak. I mean, she does seem to scale somewhat decently thanks to her new passive and just how much AP damage it can offer, but the fact that her ultimate just does way less damage, it has a flat 2 second cooldown before you can use her ultimate again to dash on a target, and just overall just a damage decrease in her kit, it doesn't feel all that amazing. It does feel like kind of like just a weaker kit overall, so I don't know. I mean, she is getting some buffs very soon that are red. Again, they're not on the PBE server currently as I'm recording this video, but maybe once those buffs hit, it'll put Akali up in the list a little bit. I'm not entirely sure at the very moment, but currently number six spot or number one for weakest. Following this, the second weakest champion of the six smaller reworks is gonna be Shaco. Now, don't forget, this is not necessarily me saying that his kid or Shaco himself now is just absolutely horrible. It's just simply in comparison to the other changes. And I mean, even though I do feel like he is pretty strong, he's probably not as strong as the other ones I still have yet to talk about. So the bad things about Shaco is, first of all, his Q ability just takes way too long to level up to actually be invisible for an extended period of time, so his early ganking power is definitely much, much weaker. On top of this, his E ability no longer slows the minion and monster attack speed by 20 to 30%, so, I mean, all these things can be a little bit difficult, and on top of this, you can't stack his W together on top of each other anymore, it has to be sort of spaced out. So. All these things kind of put in together will make his jungling just overall a little bit more difficult, but I mean, to, not to the point where he's just useless or horrible, to the point where it'll just be more difficult. The boxes that his ultimate spawns whenever it dies, for the most part, honestly don't feel all that useful, especially if you're not playing AP Shaco, because a lot of the time it just takes too long for it to actually appear and set up. People will see it coming, they'll just walk away, and I mean, it doesn't feel like it actually will do that much. So I mean, all in all, I definitely feel like he's still scaled pretty well, he'll still do a lot of damage later on to the game, but just the way his kit works and the way his early game is gonna be, it's definitely a pretty big hit. So. Pretty shitty early game, but I still feel like he'll be pretty good, if not even maybe better, later on into the game. Following this, we have Echo. Now, Echo got some smaller changes compared to most of the other champions, just to sort of emphasize him on building AP. So his passive now has a little bit more damage early game, but less damage late game, and it no longer slows, which is kind of bad. I mean, that kind of sucks, yes. But his Q ability does have an increase in 30% of the AP ratio on the out part of it, where you throw it out initially. His ultimate just heals better, and for building AP, it'll just heal you for more HP if you use it correctly, and if you use it after you take a lot of damage. I mean, I have one from 
10% HP all the way up to 100% HP. It's pretty damn sweet. And you can even trigger your W now as long as your ultimate just passes through it, which is also pretty cool and can probably set up for a lot of really sweet plays. So for the most part, I have to say Echo is still very much Echo. The changes are quite minimal, not the biggest thing in the entire world, but that's not always necessarily a bad thing. I mean, Echo currently, I feel like is actually already in a pretty decent spot. He's a pretty good champion if you know how to play him. Now he's just better if you actually play him in AP, other than the fact that his passive no longer actually provides the slow, which kind of does suck. But I mean, the fact that his ultimate just heals in a better way now and his Q has a better AP ratio, I guess maybe sort of makes up for it. It's kind of hard to say, which is why I have him in the number four spot from strongest to weakest or number three spot from weakest to strongest. But I mean, either way, he's still very much Echo, just a little bit stronger as AP. Following Echo, we have Fizz, the number three strongest assassin of the six smaller changes. So first of all, his Q ability now costs 50 mana at all ranks, and it applies his W to all enemy units Fizz passes through through his dash, which in a team fight or when you're trying to wave clear, I mean, that could be pretty damn sweet. And his new W, I think, is just kind of a better W, and at least it's more interesting, and it will help you CS in the early part of the game in the laning phase, where now, you know, when you attack the target, it fills up on the dot damage, and then you can activate the W auto attack that target once the bar is filled up and you'll do bonus damage a lot of it as well and you'll also get the w reset to one second cooldown if it kills the target so the fact that his q applies this to every single person that you pass through and his ultimate which also applies his w is pretty damn cool Oh yeah, and of course his ultimate now, based on the range that you throw it, will not only be a bigger shark, so a bigger AoE, but at the same time, it will also do a lot more damage. Oh yeah, and by the way, the ultimate applies a W to every single person hit, not just the person you initially threw the shark on. Oh yeah, and his E ability got reduced in mana by just a bit. So, I mean, all in all, Fizz is definitely looking pretty good. The next champion I want to talk about is going to be Zed, chilling in the number 2 spot of the strongest of the smaller reworked assassins. So at first I was a little skeptical as to what maybe happened to Zed, is he just completely shit now, like is, is he just ruined or what happened? And I have to say, based on the actual changes that happened to Zed and also the new AD items, which is also another big reason as to why Rengar and Talon are my top 2 for the big 4 changes, Zed is feeling quite strong. So his W will no longer grant him that extra bonus AD at the earlier stages of the game, but I mean, you left that thing on rank 1 pretty much for like maybe 70% of the game, so you're only getting 4% bonus AD. That's not a lot at all. But what really matters is your W now gives you 10 extra energy when you land 2 abilities on a target, 10 extra energy at every single rank as well, and also the shadow duration has been increased to 4.5 seconds from 4. His E ability will do more damage level 1, but it will slowly start to do less damage as you continue leveling it up, which isn't all that bad considering you do leave it at level 1 as you max your Q. But it does have a 5 second cooldown at rank 1, but it goes down to 3 seconds at rank 5, which before, or currently on the live servers, it's simply 4 seconds at all ranks. And then you have his ultimate, which now gives you bonus AD, 5 plus 5 or 10 or 15% based on the rank of your ultimate of the target that you killed and their AD. So. This thing can go up to maybe giving you around maybe 60 or maybe even 70 AD, or if you ult an enemy Jin later on to the game, it can give you over 100 AD, which is pretty cool, and it's not going to be that much more, or maybe sometimes even less than how much your W passive would normally offer later on into the game. So in that sense, that's not really the biggest thing in the entire world. It's for the most part going to be almost the same thing as your W passive that got removed. But the fact that his shadow lasts just a bit longer and your E ability will have that lower cooldown, it makes things just overall better. On top of the new AD items, the new lethality stats, Zed late game just feels very, very strong. I'm very excited to play him on the live servers and I hope you are as well if you're someone that likes to play Zed. And finally, last but definitely not least, in the number one spot of who I believe to be the strongest of the six smaller reworks, we have Kha'Zix. Every single time I saw this guy in a game, he is just absolutely destroying it. I mean, he's already really strong in the current meta, but now he's just pretty much better in almost every single way. His base attack damage has been increased by just a bit. His Q ability just feels very, very strong because now, well, it gives you that 50 range on Q and auto attack, plus it refunds 60% of the cooldown of the ability if you use it on an isolated target. So not only are you going to be spamming it very often when you're killing someone by themselves, but if you're trying to solo dragon or if you're doing Baron with your team, you're going to be spamming your Q very, very often, and you're going to be doing Baron and Dragon that much more quick. 
His W now doesn't actually slow on the base, but if you evolve it, it will actually slow 80% versus an isolated target. So, kind of a win and lose scenario here with his W, but moving into his ultimate, however, the base stealth on his ultimate has been increased by 0.25 seconds, which if you have three stacks of it is pretty damn sweet. But evolving his ultimate whenever you walk into a bush will instantly give you Void Assault, which is essentially going invisible, for three seconds in the bush, and it persists for up to 2.5 seconds after exiting the bush. 10 second cooldown per bush. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, fighting in the jungle with this guy is just going to be an absolute pain. I can't even imagine it. I don't know. All I know is that every time I've seen Kha'Zix, or whether I've played him, whether someone else has played him, he has just been absolutely dominating. He does an insane amount of damage. He's hard to deal with, and he is just very, very, very strong. So either way guys, there you have it, my current thoughts on the Assassin changes all 10 of them, the 4 big ones and the 6 smaller ones. Listed in order from the strongest to the weakest, again, this is just from my personal experience playing on the PBE server and looking a bit at the numbers, again, this could definitely change, there's a lot of nerfs and buffs probably coming to many of these Assassins, so we'll see how it happens or what happens exactly at the end of the day and at the end of the whole two week cycle for the pbe server just before it goes to the live servers maybe i'll make another one to update you guys on the current list and what i feel like it is going to be once all the changes and all the nerves and all the buffs are done and it's about to hit the live server so you have a better idea but either way thank you all so much for watching hope this gave you a better idea as to what to expect and which assassins are strong and weak if you enjoyed the video definitely make sure to hit that like button share this with your friends subscribe if you haven't and i hope to see you for the next video Peace.